alien sightings. Oh, are you... What? How good is this zoom on this camera? Real. Chat says real here in caps. It says real here in caps. <gasps> We're fucked, dude. The aliens are coming. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I'm yep. We are landing. Yep, yep. Oh, shit. Still not convinced, question mark. Watch in slow motion. Fuck off. <laughs> Go on, get on with you. <laughs> Top 10 UFO sightings from Mojo. People have been seeing strange things in the sky for centuries. True. But is the truth really out there? Give us the truth. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for another Top 10 UFO sightings. Go on, mate. Tell us. Before we begin... We publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to uh, our channel me. and ring the bell to get notified Parker. about our latest videos. New content every day. For this list, we're taking a look at even more documented cases in which people spotted an unidentified flying object, suggesting that we might not be alone in the universe. Thank God. Number 10. Rendlesham Forest Described as Britain's Roswell, the story here is that over a series of nights in December 1980, Multiple personnel at the nearby Royal Air Force Woodbridge base in Suffolk saw a UFO. The fact that they were high-ranking soldiers adds credibility to their tale of lights in the sky, damaged trees, abnormally what high radiation, fuck? and even a report of finding an actual spacecraft parked in the forest late at night. No Today, way! the incident is commemorated by a triangular, spaceship-shaped statue placed in what is alleged to be the original landing site along Rendlesham's UFO trail. Number 9. The Tehran UFO Sightings Sometimes called the most documented UFO encounter ever by believers and ufologists, the Tehran UFO incident of 1976 definitely took the Iranian military by surprise. It was late at night in the city of Tehran, Iran, when citizens began calling the Air Force Base to inform them of bright lights in the sky. They couldn't find anything on the radar, but when a commander went outside, he saw the lights with his own eyes and ordered pilots to go up in F-4 fighter what? jets to investigate. Pilots reported their instruments not working and the lights strobing between various colors, and they even attempted to open fire on the object, though strange malfunctions in the planes prevented their weapons from functioning. The high rate of climb and high rate of acceleration that we saw from the UFO was something which was not existed those days. Number 8. Wow. The Flatwoods Monster Spacecraft on September 12, 1952, one of folklore's creepiest monsters was discovered in West Virginia. A 10-foot-tall entity with glowing red eyes, a diamond-shaped head, and a shadowy exoskeleton. This was the Flatwoods Monster, an alleged extraterrestrial. And like all good aliens, it also had a spaceship, described as a pulsating, glowing ball of red light that hovered above the ground. The craft was first seen flying across the sky earlier on in the oh evening by three young boys who then went out looking for it. They tracked it down and eventually found the monster hiding in the shadows. The creature supposedly hissed at them before fleeing back to its ship. Spooky. Number 7. The Black Knight Satellite People are never beyond suggesting that NASA is involved in a myriad of top-secret cover-ups related to alien life. And one of the most well-known conspiracy theories originated from these photos of a mysterious object orbiting our planet. While the images were released what by NASA in 1998, it's like there something from fucking Halo. There are multiple reports of this unusual object dating back as far as 1899, when it was supposedly heard during unusual radio transmissions. While conspiracy theorists say this is an alien satellite that could be up to 13,000 years old, NASA says it's merely a thermal blanket lost during a routine EVA mission. Oh, Number 6. Debated. The Voronezh Incident Voronezh. This is one of the weirdest UFO stories out there. Okay. In 1989, the residents of this small city in Russia reported seeing some aliens out for a walk in a local park after landing their spacecraft in the area. While only a group of children described seeing the aliens, multiple other citizens reported seeing the ship. 
The ship was described as a ball that transformed into a disc and then landed. What? And its inhabitants were three-eyed aliens oh and gosh. a robot who allegedly abducted a 16-year-old boy. The E.T. ship was even seen by a police lieutenant and reported on officially by the Telegraph Agency of the Soviet Union. The Number 5. The Leveland UFO Case in 1957, an egg-shaped spacecraft was reported by many eyewitnesses in the small town of Leveland, Texas. It was first spotted by two farmhands who reported it to the local police. Oh. They described seeing a bright blue flash while driving that made their truck die. The craft then appeared and flew above them and was described by a different witness who saw it later in the evening as a, quote, brilliantly lit, egg-shaped object about what? 200 feet long. We have reports of an unidentified flying object! Hell you, brother! It's a long, smooth shaft, complete with two balls! What is that? But the most extraordinary thing about this case is that so many people saw it and gave almost identical reports of a giant glowing egg. Number 4. The what? Westall UFO April 6, 1966 was just an ordinary school day in Melbourne, Australia, until, at 11 a.m., 200 kids and teachers reported witnessing a UFO what? descend into a nearby paddock. One student described it as being capable of both hovering in place and moving incredibly fast. And a teacher reported seeing multiple aircraft trying to engage the spaceship, though it was much too fast for them. Then, without warning, it disappeared. It remains the most witnessed daylight UFO sighting in history. And spookily, the staff and children were instructed not to talk to the media about what they'd seen. They were certainly Australian government, and I think it was part of their job to keep everything quiet. Number 3. Japan Airlines Flight 1628 In 1986, while flying over Alaska, an international flight from Paris to Tokyo had a close encounter of the third kind with multiple UFOs reported. No way. These UFOs were seen by all of the experienced flight crew, including the pilot, Captain Kenju Terauchi, an ex-fighter pilot with more than 10,000 flying hours under his belt. UFO witnesses don't get much more credible than that. Jesus. The UFOs were balls of bright light that flew all around the outside of the plane, and Terauchi okay, described you're, you're them so as flying, quote, now, as if there was no right. such thing as gravity. Anyone who says aliens Number two, are fake the Travis aliens. Walton abduction. <laughs> On November 5th, 1975, a group of loggers in Arizona reported loggers. seeing a flying saucer out in the woods while riding in a truck. All seven of them witnessed the craft, but Travis Walton was the only one who got out to investigate, and subsequently, the only one who was abducted. The woods were searched for five days before Walton mysteriously oh reappeared, telling stories of spaceships and aliens. And he and his co-workers were eventually awarded a $5,000 prize for having the, quote, best UFO case of the year, when they supposedly passed a polygraph test proving the events to be true. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Okay. I want to see somebody getting abducted. Abduction. Abducted. Abducted. Story. Fuck it, you're, you're so fucking boring now, it's unbelievable. Like, abducted. Hey Greek, this guy is streaming a world first marathon run in Manchester for a good cause. You should check it out, smile. I was abducted by aliens. <laughs> I was abducted by aliens. Okay, fuck it, you're, you're so fucking boring. When I was 12 years old. Go on, mate. When are we going to get a Greek and Sushi Dragon collab? We Who? need you on that green screen. Who's, oh, Sushi Dragon. Nice. World's first livestream marathon. Manchester Bruv. Um, what's this one? Started. It's showtime. Thanks for coming out. Um, <laughs> I like this, this guy. Is, <laughs> I didn't expect what? this. <clears throat> Let's get this bread. Hell yeah, brother. Thank you, Chob. Yo. Hello? Yo, what up, dude? Oh, I forgot to mute. Thanks for reminding me, man. Yeah, I love Mommy. Content is coming. Content is coming.
How's he do that? All right, New York. Are you with me? Are you with me? Oh. My, my name is Howard David. Where if we're about to light it up. Martin is coming. Oh! Imagine you do this all on stream. I can't handle it! Holy oh. fuck! How many effects does he have? How many effects does this man have? And a camera up here. How many cameras? Oh my god, look at that setup, mate. Look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a fucking a million monitors. That's what I'm talking about. That right there was genuine content powered by Alienware. Alienware. Aliens. Let's get this bread. Dude, that was pretty fucking good. That was pretty good. Hassan with the 2,000 view host. Thank you, mate. Um, fuck. What do I do? I don't know what your viewers like. Um. Uh, what's that Russian fucking song? Here we are, bud. Is this what? You <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Thanks for the Thank you for the hey, thank you, mate. I'm here doing my usual content. I watch a clip and I go, <laughs> and that's pretty much it on this channel. But thank you, mate. Thank you. Maybe I'll have an intellectual conversation with you one day, mate. We're just checking about aliens. This is back in the this guy got up My parents were fighting, and uh, I didn't want to be at home, so I went to my best friend's house. We he kind of looks like an alien, to be honest. Go on, mate. Do you want me to send this to your P.O. box, Kona?
What is this? I'm back. 24 all in one. 250. <laughs> ah! That is funny, dude. Yeah, send me that, mate. Send me that. I'll have that. Wait. Wait. Are you telling me you could buy? you're going to buy that and send it to me from this bloke? No, no, I don't want a Mac. I've never used a Mac anyways. And I, God knows, this is fucking dirty. It's a dirty Mac. It's disgusting. Into the living room and uh, started watching television. The rest of the family kind of did whatever it was they were doing. They all eventually oh, we went go. to bed. My friend started talking about uh, this nightmare he had. He looked at me and started to yell, your eyes, your eyes, they turned solid black. And he jumped up off the couch. Uh, he struggled for air for a moment and then just crumbled on the floor what? between the coffee table and the couch. It scared me. I jumped out of the chair. I turned to my left. And I happened to look to my right. For whatever reason, I don't know. There was a black digital clock on top of the television. And it said midnight right on the dot. What uh, the fuck? 12.01 or anything like that. It was right on the dot. So I took the three or four steps across the living room skirted around the coffee table. Is this real? Bent down to touch my friend's shoulder to shake him to see what was going on. And as soon as I made contact with him, he was suddenly standing next to me to my left, which didn't make any sense. It was a very odd transition. But he was suddenly standing and he was screaming, what the hell happened? What the hell happened? And uh, I tried to calm him down. I thought he was going to wake up his parents because I thought at that time it was midnight. I, I turned back around. I looked at the, uh, the TV again. I saw the clock above it. It was exactly six o'clock in the morning. What? Dr. David Jacob is an uh, is an alien abductee researcher. He has found that abductees have very similar experiences around the world. Oh, <gasps> it's true. We know that the phenomenon is, is very, very widespread around the world. People think that this is an American phenomenon. It is not. I've worked with people from Africa and Asia and Latin America and Europe and so forth uh, who are abductees. I'll say the same thing all around the world. It does not matter where they're from. 36 wow. years later, I, I decided one day I wanted to find out what happened to me. I just happened to be on uh, some particular media. I saw Yvonne Smith. In 1919, Yvonne found CERO, an organization providing support and researches for alien abductees, like the FBI. So I went to see uh, uh, Yvonne. We talked for a while fucking so she got an idea so of, you know, who I am. No, man, we're watching a fucking UFO story. Yes, it kicked in Omega Lal. Hey, man, I love you. You, 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 you. When did you say you were going to play Red Dead? I said, I'm going to play it when she comes from the mountain. Um, it took two trips, uh, two hypnotic sessions to get all of the details that I was going to get. She took me back to that night where I was at my friend's house and asked me to just describe everything that, I'm, that I experienced, everything I see, any details. What? Just just keep talking you know, as the images come. Here we go. Throughout the process, I will ask questions, always being careful not to lead the person, but to allow the person to tell me what is happening. Oh. The hypnosis helped Eric remember details. He the first thing I saw was a T-shaped thing. It was shaped like a T, and I got really upset. And uh, I started yelling, and... Uh, a uh, T? Uh, the T-shaped thing turned out to be a, um, it's a, it's a kind of bed, but it's not really a bed. It's more like a uh, platform. And, uh, <clears throat> and I was laying on this thing and uh, my arms were out to my sides. My wrists <clears throat> were um, bound to it somehow, but I couldn't feel anything on my wrists. I just couldn't raise them off of it, but I could move my arms, just couldn't move the wrist. My uh, ankles were the same way the inside of this thing that I was in, it was metal, it was a domed ceiling, Whoa. and there was a being standing next to me. It wore metal mesh clothing. It was uh, robe-like, like cloth, but it was metal. And the reason why I know this is because the sleeve dragged across my face and I could see light glinting off the fibers. They had instruments that came out of the ceiling. Uh, one of those instruments was a, uh, 
looked like a black arm of some kind, and it unfolded out of the ceiling. Uh, the tip of it looked like, like a sting. What the fuck? If this is the most exercise you've done this week. Okay, well, you wouldn't be wrong. Like the tip of a scorpion, if you will. They inserted it into my left nostril and oh. pressed it all the way up into my head. Uh, it was excruciating pain. They brought in a, another device. It was cylindric. It uh, had a brass, looked like brass-like metal uh, and darker metals in layers. And they placed it on my left ear and inserted something into my ear. And again, I heard crunching noises. They didn't seem to be uh, either aware or concerned about inflicting the pain. It's just a process to them. It seemed very mechanical to them. Uh, their movements were slow and methodic. It, is, it seemed like they didn't make mistakes. People often ask me whether there's any consistency in abduction accounts. The consistency is mind-boggling. What people were talked about primarily is the procedures done to them okay, you're, you're or they were so taken on board and placed on a table. This is real, mate. Go on, mate. What? So you are saying you lied to me? Ah! and a, quote, examination uh, was, was administered to them by gray aliens, uh, which gray had to aliens. do with okay, looking at their, so poking around with their abdomen. I work with people who have like MD. Gray aliens. Hey, Grorick. What? Are you going to play Red Dead Redemption sometime? It is a fun game I've and it has yes. great reviews. I enjoyed oh. your playthrough of GTA 5 Simple Player, not so much the role player. So I think you will like Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. should play it. Wow. Cool. Cool. Their brains are fucking huge. Fuck it. You're you're so what, mate? boring now. It's unbelievable. <laughs> like Alien Nimcorn. Alien Nimcorn. <laughs> who are psychiatrists, who are a psychologist, a PhD psychologist, people who are university professors, and people who have never been able to hold a job and couldn't and drop out of school at a young age, and everybody in between. The vast majority of material that they talk about. You can tell when the L spam is incoming when my voice sounds like this. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Shut up, shut up. Let's watch your story now, okay? has never been in the public domain. Without consistency, there is no phenomenon. And uh, it is the consistency that, that, that keeps coming back, that keeps uh, me coming back, in fact. They had slightly larger than normal looking heads. They had black eyes. They had wrinkles on their face, which I thought was interesting. Wrinkles? It, uh, they appeared old. Their skin color was, uh, it didn't look healthy. It looked, uh, it looked grayish in color. They removed my stomach contents. Uh, whatever I was eating, they took that stuff out. They took me to some place. Uh, at some point, there was no gravity. I was floating, but I was held down to the table by these, these points. And they took me to a place where they removed me from the spacecraft. And uh, I'm assuming it's a spacecraft. I don't know what else to call it. I didn't see it from the outside, only from the inside. And they stood me in front of a machine. It looked like a building. It was the biggest thing I'd ever seen. It was covered in blue lights. And, it had a lot of little moving parts on it. I don't know what it was doing. Then they took me away from there. All I remember was coming back into the atmosphere. I remember feeling gravity pulling me to the table, the weight of everything coming back to me. And then there's just a blur. I don't really have any, I can't, I can't find out exactly what happened, but I ended up right back where I was standing, where my friend was, and he was already standing. It was as though they, he was already standing and they placed me there. When Eric first connect, uh, contacted me over three years ago, he descri his description of a childhood memories was very similar to other cases that I've worked with over like 24 years of research, indeed. <laughs> Are you serious? You waited your three-day ban from spamming Resident Sleeper to come back and say, I'm back, Resident Sleeper. Really? Are you fucking serious? That is another one day, okay? You get another one day for now. <laughs> you get another fucking one day. Deep emotions were displayed by the hypnosis and the indicator of the people in the experience. Very similar to frightening and traumatic. Okay. 
People are physically missing from their normal environments when they are abducted. People come back with unusual scars on their body, fully formed scars that weren't there before. Now let us suppose it is not happening. All those things still remain, and yet it's not happening. There is no such thing as the abduction phenomenon. If that is the case, we have found the most important thing ever in the history of neurolo neurology, brain function, cognition. This is, all these people are saying the same thing at their risk. Th this is not gonna bring a, 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 a applause to them that they say they've been abducted by aliens from outer space. This is, this, they, high functioning people say this to me. This guy's brain is massive. Well, it could destroy their careers. Absolutely massive. And they say this around the world and it's not happening. Then what? I don't know, mate. <laughs> I don't fucking know. That's insane. Do you believe it? We're done. That's a good one to end it on. Boom. Nice. Thank you guys very much. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a good night. Until next time. Peace.